I start with so many things kind of, so many subjects kind of broach already. Um, I would like to pose kind of a question or a suggestion for discussion to everyone on the panel, um, and that is we're dealing with personalities when we're dealing with costumes, right? And so people are thinking that um, the kind of cult around the costume is a little bit like kind of the cult of the relic in medieval times. And so I'd like if you could um, address that, um, tell us how you deal with that. If, if you agree with me, if you think that that's a phenomenon, whether you deal with it in your institution, whether you find it something that you have to address um, when people come to consult your costume collections. So I'd like to, I'd like to know your thoughts on this costume as relic. Well, there is Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> and when we uh, decided to display the, the slacks, um, we didn't want to, in, a, in any part of the exhibition, we didn't want to get into the Madame Tussaud, let's have a full representation of Miss Hepburn. But with the pants, what we've noticed is women of a certain age come into the gallery, they go immediately to the pants, and they stand there for a moment, realizing that if it hadn't been for Kate, they wouldn't be wearing what they're wearing at the moment. And that's very interesting as a, as a kind of phenomenon, I think. Thank you. Um, well, we, I, I meet a lot of fans in my line of work. Uh, collectors, often collectors are really committed to a particular star. Um, and you definitely see that sort of all religious fervor. Um, in their devotion. Yesterday I went to see a client and I looked at approximately 3,000 photos of Elizabeth Taylor. So I think we definitely have, you know, most people have, most people don't, that I know, don't collect sort of costume through the ages or something like that. They have a, a particular point of view and a particular star, um, almost always a star, not, not generally a director or, or anyone else um, that, they, that they are devoted to. Um, so it's definitely something I see in my line of work. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I think I alluded to this a little bit when, when I was talking just about this, um, this conflation um, between costume and after, really. It's just sort of like getting next to the costume is, is sort of having a, a, a piece of that cinematic experience. Um, and, you know, I, I think that there's a, there's a magic there in a way, um, and, and it, it's sort of, um, it's, it's this really sort of interesting intimate relationship between um, the public and cinema sort of mediated through this artifact, right? Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not something that we want to destroy, right, in our practices at, at the museum and in our exhibitions. Um, but we, I think, oh, you know, in a, in a perfect world, we, we aim to problematize it to sort of get people to think about sort of what that relationship is and not just take it for granted um, and, 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 and put sort of a wider scope on that. And I think the Bill Cosby uh, sweater is, is sort of an interesting um, example of that sort of relicness of like, you know, the costume being sort of part of, of um, you know, sort of who, who somebody is or, or, or having this, this big status. Um, you know, when, when, when all of the press started coming out about Cosby and his alleged behavior, um, you know, we were getting some, um, some attention for that because we had some, some sweaters that, that Bill Cosby wore on the Cosby show on exhibit and people were sort of outraged that we could continue to exhibit those sweaters as if their existence in our gallery was like a valorization of Bill Cosby the man. And it's complicated because that show was sort of him in the public mind and, and all of that. But um, you know, we we felt like, well, this you know, this it's a costume, right? It's a costume worn by an actor playing a character, and we're not advocating the activities of um, you know, and, and alleged really, you know, allegedly really terrible activities. Um, but in the end, we wound up sort of taking it down because we didn't, because we, you know, acknowledging what that 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 connection is and not wanting to offend people. But it is very complicated. Yeah, um, I've definitely experienced costume as 
relic with the Gone with the Wind costumes. Um, there are fans, really, uh, yeah, Windies, um, as really hardcore Gone with the Wind fans have christened themselves. They've given them that, that name, a worldwide group of Gone with the Wind fans. Um, and it, it very much, the costumes can very much have the quality of the relic and that people, I mean, we really had a problem with people touching. I mean, people really wanted to feel like in that moment touching that they were going to be as close to either the person, Vivian Lee, or the character of Scarlett O'Hara, or just the event of the film production itself. So like you were saying, I think that is something pretty powerful. And when you have costumes in a gallery, it's very different than um, even if you're, you know, you're thinking about the, the notion of memory, um, it's very different from your memory of watching the film, or it's bigger, it's larger than life, or if you have a film still, or watching the film on the screen, which is maybe smaller, it's human scale. So, there, so it's so evocative of that person, or that, and, you know, people have come up and, and, and you know, they, call the gown Scarlet or, or Vivian's dress. So there's a very strong connection there. Um, and there's an emotion there. People get very emotional and emotional attachments to objects are somewhat disparaged in Western culture. And kind of when you had mentioned Peter Stallygrass, um, as sort of a, a, an inspiration to think about. Um, if you're familiar with his work, he's kind of worked to sort of show that that's sort of a relative uh, recent phenomenon. Um, and I think that there can be almost this, uh, there, there was a review that came out shortly after the Gone with the Wind exhibition that we had last year, but there can be still, I think, and I think all of us in this room today would probably agree that costumes are, are powerful and that emotional connection, a lot of what we've been hearing today is very valid and very strong. But there was a review that came out, I think it was in the Daily Beast, um, where there was sort of like, almost like an, an embarrassment of the power of the costume or just wanting to sort of diminish that power. Um, a bit. Uh, the quote was something like, it was talking about the, the curtain dress and said, visitors will no doubt, you know, flock to see that dress, but costumes do what they do here, which is dress up the exhibition, but the real stars of this exhibit are the memos. <laughs> so, and, you know, believe me, there are some really incredible memos in this show that really, that told the story of the making of Gone with the Wind, but I never was going around the gallery hearing people be like, wow, the costumes were amazing, but man, those memos. <laughs> that's, that's what really got, and not to diminish them in any way, I mean, it was, it, they certainly are very valuable in telling the story of how that film was made, but I think there is um, this ambivalence still that we've all sort of brought up a little bit with just how powerful costumes can be in a museum gallery or, or a, a auction house setting. Um, well, uh, there are a uh, limited number of libraries or museums or archives that actually collect costume, and it's, it's its own special needs. Uh, so, so fabulous for the uh, Harry Ransom Center and for Kent State and so on. We do not collect costumes at Columbia, uh, but I will reflect on our rare book and manuscript library. Uh, to say that in the beginning of the 20th century, there was a, he's considered one of the earliest uh, scholars of dramatic literature, his name was Brander Matthews, and he taught at Columbia. And his idea was he firmly believed that his students, even studying dramatic literature, um, they, they needed to see the ephemera, they needed to see the artifacts, because they, he believed they needed to see the whole picture. So he started what became known as the Dramatic Museum, and he was, uh, you know, when he traveled around the world, he, we have outstanding collection of puppets and masks, um, a little bit of costume, corsets worn by some actresses, playbills, 
um, ledgers from, from theaters and so on. So this is more live theater, but I think it really sets an example of the importance of that costume is an essential part of the whole film experience. And then on a personal note, a couple years ago I was in London for a conference and we were uh, meeting at the v &A, and so one of our special tours was to see the um, costume archive. And uh, I did have that little thrill moment when I was standing next to the, the suits from the Beatles. So, uh, and you just, you know, I think she let me touch it. <laughs> That's a great thing to take us into our next um, subject because I want to, I want to address the idea that we are plucking this one thing out of a carefully crafted whole, right? Where when we think about a film. It's not just, even though we might be kind of obsessed with this one piece, this costuming, but um, we know that there's set and there's lighting and there's, there's sound, there's all these other components. So because costume lasts, how have you kind of reconciled plucking it out yet making reference in your own either collecting practices or exhibition making reference to where it was and what it was created for. I wonder if you could, if anyone wants to talk about that. Barbara, I see you nodding quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. I think we all do. Yeah. Um, sure. Um, I mean, I, I could just say for um, at the Museum of the Moving Image, in our, in our core exhibition, um, we sort of start with the idea on, on, on one of the floors, there's two floors they exhibit, and on one of the floors we sort of start with the idea of the actor sort of being um, promoted, right? So we'll have publicity images, and then we'll have a section for makeup, and then, you know, we sort of looking at all of the crafts that sort of come together um, and um, sort of create um, character. So that when you get to costumes, you're all, hopefully, you're already thinking about these components that, um, that all contribute to what a character is. Um, and that's sort of important for us, you know, like I've been mentioning, um, to sort of see, um, see costuming, which is, you know, you're, you're so sort of likely to just be enchanted by the, your proximity to it, but to see it as, as part of this larger process. So, so, so very much by design. Um, we we are, are, are trying to do that, and it's funny. I was um, really thinking a lot about this uh, during this during this day, and, and it's been something that I've struggled with um, for a while, and how to um, you know how to really successfully do that um, at, at the museum. And it sort of occurred to me that um, that it, it may be good to take the costumes off the mannequins, right? That to display the costumes in such a way where they're where they're not on a body might help um, might help you see them as objects as, as part of a whole. I, I want to give everybody a chance to speak, but I do want to just bring up one thing that I have to say one of the most sensitive installations of costume that I've seen in a long time was your Ishioka exhibition because the mannequins were practically invisible and it really and also the room we're, we're very used to obviously seeing costume and seeing fashion in darkened spaces but that space was particularly dark and i think it it did something very uh, significant yeah it, cinematic exactly so well i think in most of our training as designers um, we were taught that if you leave the theater humming the costumes you failed and, and I think that that's a very um, important understanding of the whole because on their, on their own, they don't, they're not sing. They don't sing, no, they don't. Uh, they're part of a very large enterprise. And one of the problems with um, Ms. Hepburn's exhibition is that her personality was so dominant in terms of what um, she asked the designers to do and what they knew she would accept. And so uh, in creating the exhibition, that, it was really impossible for us to separate uh, her personality from her personality on the screen from uh, the clothes, which in and of themselves just didn't have that much to say. Mm -hmm. um, for us in our auctions, we sell sort of a variety of things relating to the creation of films, so scripts, 
Um, you know, some used on sets with notes from the director and the script supervisor, which are really interesting because so you can really sort of see the process and uh, production.